So to start, I'm gonna be talking to y'all about the feed and nutrition of broilers, which are meat birds. So the aim for for whenever you're whenever you're feeding, whether that being for broilers or for layers, is for production. So in terms of broilers, we're really focusing on meeting their nutrient requirements so that they can grow efficiently. So that means quickly and that means healthily, and we're trying to meet to get to a certain carcass weight at a certain time. For a standard Cornish cross, we're usually looking at a starter and then a grower. So for a starter, we're looking for a 21% protein, and then the grower is going to be a little bit lower in protein, which is 18%. Um, and if feeding the different feeds, like breaking it down into a starter and then to a grower, is going to meet those the specific nutrient requirements during that stage of growth. So earlier on in life, they need a little bit more protein. A little bit later in life, they need a little bit less. Um, and one of the benefits of feeding multiple feeds is, one, that it's more specific, and then two, um, it, you're lowering the protein, and protein is, generally speaking, going to be the most expensive nutrient um, being fed. So these are the nutrient requirements. Um, this is more of a, as a reference. You're not always going to see all of these different nutrients on a feed tag, um, but they are equally as important. So a lot of the times you'll see crude protein, methionine, and some of the vitamins are going to be listed. So if you can reference what the nutrient requirements are based on what's on your feed tag, it'll give you an idea of if you're going to be able to meet those nutrient requirements. Um, again, in this chart, this is going to be mostly for your Cornish cross and your, um, your white commercial breeds. If you're raising a heritage breed or the slower growing breeds like the, the Freedom Ranger, it's going to be, they're going to take a little bit longer to grow out and they also have higher protein requirements. So your starter, you're looking for a little bit higher at a 22% protein, whereas in your grower, it's going to be more like a 19% protein. Okay, so when choosing your feed, you want to consider a few different factors, um, and also you want to have your goals in mind. So a few things you want to consider for, for the feeds you're choosing is you want to choose the feed based on the breed. So like we talked about in the previous slide, your Cornish cross or your, your commercial breeds are gonna have different nutrient requirements, lower protein requirements than say your, your Freedom Rangers or your slower growing birds. So make sure the, the feed matches what you're growing. Um, you also wanna consider your desired carcass weight. So if you're looking for the, the larger carcass weight, maybe you wanna do um, feed them the grower for a little bit longer. And lastly, you want to think about your market. So some people have markets where, they're where their customers are requesting the birds being raised on specialty feeds, specialty feeds being um, maybe soy-free or corn-free or soy and corn-free. Um, so just make sure that you are raising your birds based on what your market is after. All right, so another common question that we get is how much feed should they eat? Now, how much feed a broiler is gonna eat is gonna be based on a couple of different factors, such as the breed, type of feed, and also the weather plays a big impact in what kind of feed you should be feeding also. Um, on average, a typical Cornish cross being fed a corn and soy-based diet will eat about 12 pounds of feed for a roughly four pound carcass weight. Um, Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that poultry eat for their energy requirements. So if you live in a hotter climate, such as um, if you're living in Arkansas or maybe in Georgia where, where the, your summers are pretty hot and humid, that's going to affect their feed intake and you might have to adjust the feed that you're feeding based on that. Um, meaning that you might need to increase the protein to help encourage growth. Because again, they're eating for their, their energy requirements. And whenever it's hot, they, their bodies don't need quite as much energy. Um, so they're going to back off on their feed consumption. And again, keep in mind that your goal is to gain weight for butchering. So if you're not meeting your, your growth standards, then you definitely need to reevaluate what kind of feed that you're feeding. Okay. The best way to know if the feed that you're feeding is meeting the need, your needs and your bird's needs um, is by tracking their feed consumption. 
So tracking feed consumption will tell you how well your broiler is convert, converting feed to meat. Um, so it's a rate of measuring the efficiency that livestock convert feed to meat. And the amount of feed being fed, to find this, you need to take to track the amount of feed being fed during the entire grow out period. So to calculate this, you need to take the feed consumed and then you need to take your average, your, the average feed consumed per bird divided by the average carcass weight and that's gonna give you your feed conversion ratio. Once you have these numbers, you can compare your feed conversion ratio to the average feed conversion ratios for your, that, that breed. Um, for example, Cornish cross, you'll usually see a three to one. Your freedom rangers, which are a slower growing bird, you're usually gonna see closer to a four to one. Um, and that's, so that's three pounds of feed will give you one pound of meat. And then for freedom rangers, that's four pounds of feed will give you one pound of carcass weight. Um, so whenever you're comparing these, um, when you're comparing them to the breed standards, if you are below, meaning that it is taking less feed to make one pound of carcass weight, that's great. Um, try to reevaluate and see what things you're doing well and see if you can replicate those in your next batches. If you're above the, aver the breed average, then that means it's taking more feed than normal to make one pound of carcass weight. Um, if that's the case, you'll need to reevaluate a couple of things that's going on on farm. Um, the first thing that you can look at is what kind of feed you're feeding. Also, are you feeding grit? Grit is really important for feed conversion because grit is essentially an animal um, poultry's teeth because they don't have teeth. So grit is going to help grind down feed to make sure that they're using it more efficiently. That's going to really help with your feed conversion. Okay, another thing that's gonna impact how much feed it takes to raise a bird is going to be what you're feeding. Um, we talked a little bit about how soy-based diets are going to give you a better feed conversion ratio. So for example, so the, and the problem with soy is that it is a really good protein source. Um, it has a good amino acid profile. There are no inclusion limits. Um, and it's also, if you're using the whole roasted soybean, it's got a good energy and it's got good fat. Um, now, if you or your customers are requesting a, either a soy-free or corn and soy-free um, fed bird, you need to keep in mind that that's gonna change how much feed is going to it's gonna take to finish that bird. Um, so they generally have a little bit slower grow out period if you're fed corn and, corn and soy free diets. Um, they're also gonna eat a little bit more because all most of the soy alternatives are lower in energy because they're meals. So like linseed meal or fish meal or sesame meal, the oil has been pressed out of that seed, which is reducing the energy. So that's gonna affect how much feed they're feeding. And again, this is gonna result in a higher feed conversion ratio. So. Um, corn and soy free diets are are, very, are getting more and more common. So um, there are ways to go about doing it, but you just have to keep in mind that it's going to have a little bit, your birds are going to eat a little bit more being fed with these corn and soy free diets. Okay, lastly, I wanted to talk about water. Water is hands down the most, most important nutrient for all walks of life. The water being fed, being offered should be fresh, clean and accessible. And one of the reasons that water is so important is because water drives feed consumption. So if they aren't getting enough water, they're likely not to eat enough feed. Um, again, it's really important that your water is clean. So clean your waters out regularly. If you wouldn't drink the water, then you should not make your poultry drink it either. So for success, make sure that you have clean water and good food.